Good morning, developers. If you are new to the channel, my name is Rob and it is Algorithm Monday. We focus on a code challenge of some kind to push ourselves to think creatively about how we code rather than implementation details. And today we are on problem number 23 of Project Euler. And if you have read this problem already, it is wordy. I would, I would say it's pretty much a word nightmare, really wacky, difficult to understand, take your pick. And I wish I could tell you that I had some really insightful way to explain it to you but I don't. <laughs> it's just a complicated, difficult to understand problem. And for what it's worth, before we go over it, you can read it on your own time if, if you want to and try and make sense out of it. I, rather than even pseudocode, I'm going to take you through these four steps to help you understand what we're trying to do and then we'll code it out. But for what it's worth, I have been a developer for over 20 years and I am challenged by these but the good news is it is paying off because I am noticing since, since we started doing this, I am noticing I am consistently better uh, on a daily basis in, in so many ways. So it is worth it, but it is going to, it is going to take a minute and gonna, to wrap your head around it. Just please do your best to stay with me. We've got a couple, uh, t a couple tasks. Task one is to figure out a whole bunch of numbers, proper divisors. What's a proper divisor? And then we've got sieve underneath. What does that mean? We did this very thing in problem number 21. So if you want to take a step back, um, you probably fall into one of two camps. Either you haven't done that problem with me or you did it, but it's been a long time. You don't remember what they are. So we'll talk about it, but I'll link that video in the description. Problem number 21 that I think 21 really is just a setup for 23. Um, we'll do a couple examples here quick. Uh, let's look at the number six. What are its divisors? What numbers go evenly into six? Well, one, and two, and three, and six. So those are all the divisors of the number six. The proper divisors are the same list, but we get rid of the number itself. So every number is divisible by one and itself. We just drop the, we drop the number itself and we have the proper divisors. If we go up one to the number seven, what are its divisors? Well, it's prime, so it only has one and seven. Well, proper divisor, we drop the number seven, seven simply has one proper divisor. That's going to be true of every prime number. It's only going to have the number one. Okay. One more example, the number 12. We have the number one, two, three, four, six, and 12. But again, we get rid of 12 because we're looking for proper divisors, not just the regular divisors. And that's the numbers we come up with. One, two, three, four, and six. Okay. To find these, we're going to use a sieve and we're literally going to pull code from problem 21 that we already did. Again, you can watch that if, if you need to. Um, we're gonna have to make one caveat because I made a mistake in uh, in that problem that didn't cause a problem, but it, it wasn't, uh, it didn't get us all the coverage that we needed. Or I should say that I did something that we shouldn't have done and I'll show you when we get there. But we are interested in summing these up just like we did in, in problem number 21. And the sieve is gonna work like this. We are gonna have a list with all the numbers up to this number. We'll get to that in a minute. For the number six, we want to find all the proper divisors. Well, what we're going to do is we're just going to multiply a ton of numbers together. And every time we find the product, so we multiply the number two and three together, that equals six. We're going to go to six and we're going to add those two as proper divisors. So just as a quick, for instance, we have our list and in here at index six, I know that looks more like a dictionary, but it's the only way to do it. Uh, at number six, we're going to multiply two and three together. We know those are proper divisors because we just multiplied them together. So we can go to the number six and put them in here. Now we're not going to keep a list here. We're going to just, we're going to add them together and you'll see why, because we don't care what they are. We just, we just need to know the sum. Um, if we bump it up to where it's going to be an outer loop, I is two and the inner loop is four instead of two and three, that's going to be the number eight. So we know that two and four are proper divisors of the number eight. Okay. Let's say we bump it up to where I is six and uh, J is eight. That's going to give us the number 48. We know that six and eight are proper divisors of 48 because we just multiplied them together. Okay. This thing, the sieve in order to find these proper divisors and their sums, because we're going to do that in, in one step is so fast. It is so much faster than it, almost anything else out there. I, I could find, I found some solutions that took 80, 90 seconds to run. Granted, my desktop is fast, but it runs in about one second, the entire problem. So this is, this is fast and it is, it is what we will use from problem 21. Okay. So proper divisors, 
These are examples of proper divisors. It's all the divisors with the exception of the number itself. Then we've got this concept of perfect, deficient, and abundant. A number is perfect if the sum of the numbers, which is what we're going to do here, equals the number itself. So the number 6 is going to have 1, 2, and 3, so I'll put 1 at the front. We're going to add those together. This equals 6, right? The sum of the proper divisors is the same as the number itself. That makes it a perfect number. I'd never heard of this before, so maybe it's a thing in, in math, but there you go. Uh, if we come over here to the number 7, and I'm, gonna, I'm just going to put it up here uh, as we kind of run out of room there, we only have the number 1, okay? 1 is less than 7. It is known as a deficient number, and I'll go ahead and put that here. We've got 6, we've got 7. If we take the number 12 and we sum all those together, so we're at the number 12, we get the number 16. 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 6. That is an abundant number because 16 is bigger than 12. Okay, so 6 is the same as 6. Perfect. 1 is less than 7. Deficient. 16 is bigger than 12. Abundant. Okay? We don't care about perfect and we don't care about deficient. Those are distractions. It's interesting information, but we don't need to know anything about those to solve this problem. We only care about abundant numbers. Okay? Okay, so, so we're going we're gonna to figure out all of the, the proper divisors of all the numbers that are, are smaller than this. And again, we'll get to that. And then we're going to find out which ones are abundant. Okay, so once we have done that, we, we... Okay, now this is the tricky part. I have no idea why this is true. But they tell us that the number 28,123, every number above that you can make by adding two abundant numbers together. I don't know why, according to math analysis, whatever that means, but you can find two abundant numbers and add them together and find every number that's bigger than this, okay? That's very important because our job is to find the sum of all the numbers that you cannot make by adding two together, okay? So pull this first part out. We need to find the sum of two abundant numbers. So we're, we're we got our proper divisors of, of all the numbers that are less than this. We're going to find out which ones are abundant. So now we have a list of abundant numbers. We're going to go through that list. We're going to add every combination of them together. That's going to give us the sum of every possible number that, that you can add two different abundant numbers together and get to. Every number that's not in that list. So we cannot make this number by adding two abundant numbers together. What is the sum of those numbers? <laughs> okay, so I hope that makes sense. Watch it again if you need to one more time and then we'll go code. We are going to find all the proper divisors and we're gonna use a sieve to do it. So we're gonna, we're gonna go through, we're gonna have an i of two and a j of two. We're gonna multiply those together. We're gonna to go to the number four and we're gonna put the number two in there, okay? We're not gonna put two twice because uh, it, it happens to be the square root, so it's a special case, but 2 only gets in there once. We're going to bump i up, uh, sorry, we'll leave i at 2. We're going to bump j up to 3. That means we're going to go to the number 6. We're going to put the number 2 and 3 there because we know those are proper divisors. We just multiplied them. We're going to do that for every combination that, that results in a, in a number below this. Okay? That's going to get us all the proper divisors. While we're doing that, instead of just putting the number one, two, and three, we're gonna add them together. So we're gonna find out, right, when we're all done, we'll have the number six at six, we'll have the number, uh, we'll have the number 16 at 12, we'll have the number one at seven, that kind of thing, okay? We'll find out which ones are abundant. So we'll loop through and we'll check to see, does the number here, is it bigger than that number? No. Is this bigger than this number? Yes. Is this number bigger than this number? No. Okay? So we've got, a, we've got a list now of abundant numbers. Then we are going to go through and loop through all of the abundant numbers and add every combination of them together that results in a sum less than this because we don't have to go above that because for some reason it, you, you can prove or it's been proven that, that that will never be the case. We don't have to worry about that. We're going to remove those from our list that will leave us over with the numbers that cannot be made by adding two abundant numbers together. We'll sum those up and that is the answer, okay? As I said, I wish I, I wish there was an easier way to explain it, but there's not. Let's go code. Please grab your code editor. I've got a VS Code open, but anything of course is fine. Uh, on line one, I've got the time module. Two, I've got math. We'll come back to math. Time is so that we can grab the start time on line three. 
down at the bottom, line 31, we've got the end time. 32, we grab the difference and print it off. So you can, you can bring that in if you would like to. Have the answer on line four, so if you want to try it on your own, please do. I did not read the problem with the board, so I put it in here, and I made note that this is the distracting part with perfect numbers. This is a partial distraction because it mentions deficient numbers, which you don't care about, but it does talk about the abundant numbers. And then this is, uh, this is the end here, what we actually care about. Find the sum of all the positive integers, which cannot be written as the sum of two abundant numbers. <laughs> it's just so wordy. <laughs> Line 20. Uh, I've got uh, our, uh, our tasks here. We'll look at those in a minute, but the, the limit is 28,123. This is as high as we need to go. And that is back up here on line uh, 15 uh, that we talked a little bit about that. Okay, so our first job is to find all the abundant numbers with our sieve from problem number 21. And I will link the code that I'm about to write in the description as well as to problem number 23. Um, if you grab 21 and come down here to the sieve solution, I'm gonna grab everything in this uh, loop here except for start time and I'm gonna paste it in right below our limit. So we are gonna find all the abundant numbers with our sieve. So this is, this is finding the proper divisors and then we're gonna add them all together. Uh, so th this actually has two steps. To do that, we have to find all the proper divisors for every number under our limit and then we don't need to keep all the divisors, just add them together as we go. So back down here, line 29 comes first. We, we create a variable called factors which we take a list with the number one in it and we multiply it times our limit. That is going to give us a list of the number one in 28,123 different indices. So we've got one huge list with the number one in every slot. We are going to multiply every possible combination of numbers that have a product of less than our limit. Okay, so this is a, a mistake here. It should not be I. I got away with that in the last uh, in the last solution because I was set from earlier. That should be the limit, and we're going to change this from int to math dot seal. I spelled seal wrong. There we go. So what we are doing is we're going to loop on the outside. This is going to get us every number from two up to the square root plus one to make sure that we get every number. So it's gonna be two to whatever the square root of this number is. Why? Well, because in J, this is our internal number, we ne we're always gonna start at I because we will already have hit the other side coming from the bottom. Again, watch number 21 if you need clarity on this, but we start at I because otherwise we will be doing double work. We've already solved some of these and we don't wanna do that. We stop when we get to the limit divided by I because wherever we are at on i times this number is going to be bigger than this number. And so again, we, we can stop at the square root because we're gonna be multiplying i times j, and j is always gonna be as big as i, which means if, we, if i is the, is the square root, we multiply them together, it's gonna be at least this big or, <laughs> or bigger. So that's why we can stop there. We're gonna end up with, okay, this is the seed part, line 34, multiply them together and put in that spot the sum of those two things. So, as a for instance, we're gonna put at six, when i is two and j is three, that's what's gonna get stuck there. We know that these are proper divisors at the spot six because we just multiplied them together, right? <laughs> two times three, so I can do that, I guess I can put in there two times three, we're gonna put in there whatever two plus three is, which happens to be five, okay? That is going to give us a, a huge list of every number with the sum of its proper divisors. So again, you can watch number 21 if you would like to see this even a little bit closer action, but I will print off factors quick, and I'm just gonna grab, uh, we'll grab the first 10, just so we can see what that looks like here. So, running our code. All right, we put one in every slot to start off with, so we'll have to get rid of the, the, the zero element later because that's not relevant. One only has one proper divisor, same thing uh, with the number two, the number three, the number four, that has one and two. Okay, this is a problem because our code, and this is something that I left over from the last time too, we are always adding both i and j. We're gonna have to put an if statement in here. If i equals j, then this is the square root 
only add it one time. So I'm going to copy this, drop it in, and we're only going to add I. Else, and I'll drop a note in here, add both numbers. Oh, I can put slash divisors. Okay, so this will give us a more correct answer. Let me run that exact same code again. Okay, we get to the number four here. Four has one and two as proper divisors, not four. We add those together, we get three. Five is prime, it only has the number one. Six, remember we did this one, it has one, two, and three. We add those together, we get six, it's a perfect number. Seven is prime. Eight has one, two, and four, which gives us seven. You get the idea, okay? This is doing all of the work, this sieve, and it is, you can see, uh, it took one thousandth of a second with my with my video software running to actually calculate it. So at this point, we have the the proper divisors, the sum of the proper divisors of every single number from two, I guess from zero <laughs> up to this number, uh, which is our limit. Okay, so that covers us for number one. We are now ready uh, to do number two, where we're going to sum every abundant number with every number above it. And whatever the sum is, is not going to be in our final list, okay? So I've got a note here we can break. We'll come back to that here in just a second. We are going to do 4i common num in, we will use enumerate, and we're going to loop through factors. If you haven't uh, used enumerate before, haven't seen me use it, this gives us both the number as well as, uh, as the index. It makes it a little bit easier to work with. If the number is greater than i, this is abundant add it to our list and that means we need in the list so let's uh, let's create a variable called abundant numbers which will just be an empty list we are going to do abundant numbers dot append i looks like I have some screwy indentation there let me fix that quick okay so we are looping through the number we are on is 12. Remember 12, the sum was 16. We did that back on the board. Is 16 bigger than 12? It is. That means we're going to append the number 12 uh, to our abundant numbers list. So I'm going to print off again here. Let's grab abundant numbers. And I'm going to grab, again, we'll grab just the first 10 here. And I'll run this again. These are our first 10 abundant numbers. And the number zero, that needs to go because that's not an abundant number. Um, it, it is because there's a one there. That's why it thinks it's an abundant number. It needs, uh, we need to get rid of that. The reason it's there is because our indices related to our numbers directly. So when we are all finished with this loop, we can do abundant numbers dot pop zero. And I'm going to put a note here, get rid of zero at the beginning. It was there to make the code simpler. Alrighty. Otherwise, we'd have had to have a bunch of plus ones and stuff like that, and we, we don't want to do that. So we are in good shape. We come back up here. Number two, we need to sum every abundant number with every number above it. Again, we don't need to do double duty. You don't need to add the same number, the same two numbers more than once. That's extra work. So add every abundant number with every number above it, and whatever the sum is, is not going to be in our final list, okay? So let's come down here and we will make a, uh, a list called non-abundant numbers. And the way that we're gonna do this, I'll make a note here, assume that all numbers qualify. And I'll put, in, I'll put a note in here, they don't and swap them, remove them when we find a sum. Alrighty, so our non-abundant numbers, let's do num for num in range of our limit. So we're gonna make another list and this will simply be, it'll correspond from zero all the way up to 28,123. So we're gonna assume every single one of these as a number that we cannot make by summing two abundant numbers together. Again, that's not gonna work. Uh, it, it doesn't work like that, but we will remove them when we find a sum. So for i in range, we're gonna loop through our abundant numbers list. 
Okay, again, we're gonna loop through and add every single abundant number with all the numbers above it. So outer loop is the lower number. And we'll grab that here in a second. 4j in range from i to that same number to the length of our list, like so. And this is the inner loop is the upper number. So let's go ahead and make just some convenience variables for ourselves. We will have lower number equals, it will be uh, abundant numbers, i, and then we will have the higher number, it is going to be abundant numbers j. So again, we are looping, uh, starting at i, i starts at zero and goes all the way out to uh, how, our biggest abundant number. J is gonna start at I because we don't need to add numbers together in reverse. Again, watch number 21 if you wanna see a little bit more about that and go all the way out till, till we are finished. That right there, sum of numbers is going to equal, let's add those two together. So our lower number plus our higher number. Okay, we just have one task now. <laughs> if the sum of the numbers is less than the limit, this number does not qualify. Okay, so scrolling back up here. Our job is to find the sum of all the positive numbers which cannot be written as the sum of two abundant numbers. What we just found right here, we added two numbers, two abundant numbers together, and got this. If that's less than our limit, we just found a number that doesn't qualify. So, Let's go to our non-abundant numbers. What index will we want this index, the sum of the numbers? Whatever number we just found by adding two together, go to that number and set it equal to zero. So clear it out, clear out that number from our non-abundant uh, number list, okay? Otherwise, we are going to break, and the reason for this is because that means the sum of the numbers is bigger than our limit. We don't need to keep going. We are too high. We know back up top here, uh, in uh, wherever that's at, I think it was in this thing, we know that there can't be any numbers above this number that, that qualify, because everything above that can be, can be represented. So if we get above our limit, Stop. <laughs> we break break out of that and increment i to the next spot and start j over wherever it needs to be. Okay? That means if all went well, we can print off, we can use the sum function and simply hand it our non-abundant numbers. When this is finished, there'll be zero in every spot where we were able to add these two numbers together, two abundant numbers together, that, that was less than the limit. That'll be a zero there all of the rest of the numbers will still be what they were back up here. They will be left alone. These will be all the numbers that, that we couldn't, uh, we, never, uh, we never got a sum of. So line 67, here's hoping that we get this number, uh, 4,179,000, run our code, and we do, and it took 1.2 second with my video software running. Okay, I will go back over it here one time real quick, but thank you so much for watching. I know this is wordy, it is difficult, it is complicated. Thank you for being motivated. As I said at the beginning, this has made me a better programmer doing these, and, and if you stay consistent with them, I don't see how it's possible that won't, that won't happen for you too. We have our limit here. We build a list on line 29 of the number one, uh, that, many, <laughs> that many number ones in a list. And we're gonna, we're gonna overwrite those. This is our sieve. We're gonna loop through exactly the right number of times. So we're never gonna uh, multiply a number and get bigger than this because of these two things. Again, watch problem 21. If, uh, if i equals j, then this is a square root and we only add the number i as, at, that, at that index, right? We found a product here. So two times two equals four. So go to four and put a, a two in there or add a two to it. Otherwise, we need, uh, we need to put both of them in there. When we are done, factors is going to be the sum of, every, uh, of all the proper divisors for every number below this. So I could put that note in here. Factors now contains the sum of all proper 
divisors of every number below our limit. Okay, so with that, we now can find the abundant numbers. We loop through all of our factors, check to see if the number is bigger than i. So whatever is in slot 12, which would be the number 16, is it bigger than 12? It is, that means it's abundant, right? If we're on seven, the number one, is it bigger than seven? It's not, so we won't put it in. So when we're done, we have all the abundant numbers in our list plus the number zero at the beginning. So we need to get rid of that, looked at that already. And then now the last part, we're gonna assume that all the numbers qualify. So build one more list with everything from zero up to our limit. That's right here. And then we will get rid of them whenever we disqualify them. We loop through all of the indices of our abundant numbers, which we found right here. We do the same thing here for J, except we, we never need to start it at, uh, at zero because uh, that's I's job. We never need to do them in reverse. Two times three is the same thing as three times two. Um, we grab the lower number and the higher number, add them together. Whatever that number is does not qualify. We reset it to zero as long as it's less than the limit. If it's bigger than the limit, we don't need to keep looking because we found a number that we know cannot possibly be uh, a, uh, it cannot qualify and no number above it can qualify either because of, uh, this <laughs> one last time, this goofy line here, which I don't understand, but we take their word for it. Okay. Once again, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I will link uh, another algorithm, uh, Monday video, uh, congratulations on getting this far. Well done. I will see you next time.